In this tutorial, we're going to look at drawing shapes and manipulating the viewports. As you can see, we have our top viewport, left, front, and perspective. And in this class, at least for the beginning of the class, we're going to leave the left, top, front. This is going to be a two-dimensional drawing of our shape. And in our perspective drawing, we're going to see a three-dimensional drawing of it. So we're going to start by choosing our geometry, which is three dimension, box, and when you click on box, you're going to see some parameters down here we'll look at in just a little while. But in order to draw our box, this is a multi-step process. We're going to start up here in two dimensions. We always draw in 2D, and we're going to click and hold our mouse button, drag the length of our box, when we let go of our mouse button, we're going to set the height of our box. And when we get it to the height that we want it, we'll click again and that will set our box. Now if you'll notice over here, in our parameters, we have length 81, width 163, and height 42. We can actually type in these numbers if we know exactly how big we wanted this box. For, for instance, if we wanted a length of 60, simply type 60 and watch the box change. So we shrunk it a little bit. And our width, we're going to do 150. And our height, we're going to do 50. Now in the length segments, width segments, and height segments, if you'll notice this is one big rectangle. When we increase the segments, it's going to subdivide this rectangle and this will become important later on when we manipulate this box. So we're going to bump this up to five segments each. And now if you'll notice we have subdivisions five, five, and then five over here. Now with our box tool we have a couple of our other options available to us. I'm going to move this box and get it out of our way. I'm going to select box again. The creation method is going to default to box, but if we click cube, it's simply going to make a cube. A cube is going to be equal width, height, and length. When we click, you'll see all we have the ability to do is change the actual scale of the box. One other thing you'll notice when you click on box is this keyboard entry. We'll expand that by clicking the plus. And we have X, Y, and Z, and then length, width, and height. Now, this is going to act a little bit different than what you would expect it to act like. It actually depends on which viewport you have selected as to how it's going to draw your box. For instance, I'm going to click on the top viewport. We're going to click on box again. Expand this out. We're going to leave these X, Y, and Z at zero, and we're going to simply set our length to some different numbers so that we can tell a little bit about what's going on here. I'm in the cube mode. We've got to switch over to the box mode in order to have these different. Now, Again, this viewport, the top viewport is selected. When we hit create, it's going to center it on these axes, which is the Y and the X axis. So now I'm going to select, I'm going to keep the same numbers here. I'm going to select the front viewport, and I'm going to click create. Notice that my boxes are not lined up with each other. That's because in this one, it actually lined up on the X and the Z axis. Here it was the Y and the X axis. Here it's the Z and the X axis. So that can be a little bit confusing, but once you get a little bit of practice with it, it can become pretty powerful when you're trying to create multiple boxes, especially with uh, the exact same sizes, but in different areas of the plane. One other thing that we will use with our boxes quite a bit is coloring the boxes. And that's pretty easy to do in 3D Max. Um, 
when we get into materials, we'll show how to actually put materials, wood, metal, things like that on the boxes. But to simply change the color of the boxes, by default, they go to a different color so you can tell one box from another. So, for instance, if these two were the same color, they would almost look like the same shape. But when we click on the box, notice this little color box over here. We can select that, and our window will pop up. We have the choice of a bunch of different colors here, or we can add a custom color, kind of like in Photoshop. Find the color that we like. Over here, we can actually adjust that color even more. Click Add Color. Click on that and click OK. And our box is that color now. Let's look at a couple more shapes. We're going to start with a sphere. When we click on the sphere button, by default, it's on center. And what that means is when we actually draw the sphere, we're going to click and it's going to draw from the center. So wherever we click first will be the center of our sphere. So I'll try to get as close here as possible. Click and drag. And if you notice, the center of our sphere stays right there in the center where we click the first time. No matter where I move, it's going to be in the center. If I click edge, where we click the first time will actually be the edge of the sphere. So when I click and drag out, It'll keep that edge on this, on that zero zero point, and as I move my cursor around, it'll actually rotate my sphere around that edge, staying on that zero zero point, and I can manipulate it that way. So I'm going to draw it back in the center again. The sphere also has the keyboard entry, just like the box did. Here it has the radius, so after we've drawn the sphere, we can affect the radius of the sphere in and out. And the segments of the sphere, segments just like the box, we increase them, we'll have more segments, decrease them, we'll have less. The sphere has this hemisphere tool. The hemisphere tool allows us to cut the sphere a certain amount. Now, the hemisphere has two different options here, chop and squish. Well, if we chop it, it will leave the segments the way they are, and it will actually just cut the sphere as we move it. So let's increase it, and we'll see that cut. Let me rotate it around. And you can see it's just cutting the sphere all the way down to zero. If we squash it, if you'll watch up here in the 2D pane, you'll actually see the segments change shape, change size, because what we're doing is we're keeping the same segments, we're just pushing them all together. And later on that will become important as to how we do that and why we would do that. Another option that is really, really valuable with the sphere is the slice tool. And when we turn the slice tool on, it allows us to actually slice it into not just and half and allows us to slice it into segments and, and we'll see how that works here so as we increase that we can kind of make a an orange slice shape apple increase that around this might be useful let's say if we're making an eyelid to close and open when it blinks and we can also change where it slices to and it will affect the other side All right, the next shape we're going to look at is the cylinder. The cylinder, again, has many of the same options that the other two shapes that we looked at cover. For instance, the center or the edge, how it draws the, the cylinder. The center draws from the center. The edge draws from the edge. The cylinder, just like the box, is a multi-step process. You click and hold to set the radius of the cylinder. When we let go, we set the length of the cylinder. We can set the height segments. The cap segments on the cylinder are the edges of the cylinder. So as we increase our cap segments, you'll notice that it increases those polys in the cap. Sides, 
and height segments, increase these height segments here. It also has a slice function, just like the sphere does. And we can set this slice to as well.